In the last part of this story, we stopped that there was a ceremony dedicated to Camille. The people who were there very much regretted that Camille died. At that moment, they were communicating among themselves that fate is very cruel, and good people like Camille and Theodore should live happily, but instead only mean Everett's live well. Suddenly someone says to the person who said all these words to be quiet because the girl can hear their conversation. Then suddenly Theodore came up to Lily and asked her why she was standing there, instead of hiding from the rain. The guy had an umbrella in his hands, which he was handing to the girl so she wouldn't get wet in the downpour. Immediately after the ceremony they went to the castle, there was an unexpected meeting. At that moment some girl seeing Theo looks very embarrassed and says that they have not seen each other for a long time. But at that moment, this girl looks quite happy that she met him. Immediately after that, the girl decided to introduce herself and said that her name is Adeline Albinus. After she introduces herself, Adeline looks directly at the protagonist and asks her if she understands correctly that she has not met the protagonist before. After the girl introduced herself, the protagonist made a small bow to her and said that Adeline must be the daughter of the Duke of Albinus. According to the protagonist, she had heard about the girl, and she was very pleased to meet her in person. Immediately after these words, Adeline came up to Theodore and put her arm around him. According to her, she and Theo have been close friends since childhood. She even says that they are so close that they have no secrets from each other. But the girl is not sure of her statement and asks Theodore if this is true. It appears that some time ago, rumors were actively found that Adeline would marry Theodore. However, as far as she knew then, Duke Albinus was against it. Realizing this, the protagonist thinks that once she divorces her husband, Adeline can marry him. But the girl realizes that this can only happen if the Duke himself gives permission for this marriage. Dear friends, and if you want to see the next part of this story, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the like under this video when it gets 40,000 views or 5,000 likes. Then I will definitely start doing the second part for you. Because of the thought that Adeline might steal her husband, the protagonist became very sad. Seeing this, the girl came up to her and said that she had turned pale. Also, after these words, she asked the protagonist if she was feeling unwell. At that moment, the protagonist looked at this girl and her husband and thought that Adeline was very lucky compared to her, and she immediately became perplexed and as if she was punishing herself for thinking that, and the protagonist even asked herself what she had just thought about it. Immediately after these thoughts, Lily turned away from Adeline. Seeing this, the girl says that the protagonist looks not important at all. According to her, she is very pale, but Lily says that she is fine and allows the girl to make up for lost time only without her presence, because according to her, she has to go. Immediately after these words, Lily heads for the exit of the room, watched by Theodore, who does not quite understand why his wife has such a sharp reaction to what is happening. After a while, Lily is already in another room drinking tea and being near the fireplace. She begins to think about the situation a bit, and wonders if she stole the place that was meant for Adeline. At this point, it's as if her ghost appears next to the protagonist and says that this is just the way it is. The ghost says that Adeline could probably comfort Theodore in a way that she couldn't. Naturally, Lily makes the ghost shut up. She starts begging the ghost to stop saying these things to her, because obviously it hurts the main character. Suddenly, during these thoughts, one of the maids enters the room. She turns to Lila and asks if the girl would like to go to bed earlier than usual saying that maybe the lavender and incense she has brought will help her fall asleep faster. Her maid's words seem to calm Lily down a bit. She says her idea sounds good and asks the girl to light the incense. Of course, the maid agrees to do her mistress's bidding. Immediately after that, the maid lit incense. At this time, Lily had already gone to her bed, and after the maid completed the task naturally, the protagonist thanked her. Hearing the words of gratitude, Charlotte even blushed a little and said that she is always happy to help, and her ladyship. Immediately after that, the maid said goodnight to her mistress. Even though the maid lit the incense, Lily still couldn't sleep. In the middle of the night, the protagonist got up from her bed and went to one of the tables that were in her room. After the girl came to the table and she took out of the drawer that was in the table medicine, right after that, the protagonist began to pour into her hand a huge number of pills that were there. Immediately after that, she immediately drank all the pills, 
and Lily was as if transported to the world of dreams, the protagonist herself realized that she was seeing another dream. During this dream, she starts to look around and wonder what she will dream this time. The girl thinks that if it will be another nightmare with brothers or Lenin, she will destroy them. Because according to her in her dreams, the main rules are her rules. Suddenly, she starts to hear someone saying her name, at which point the protagonist turns around and sees her husband Theodore in front of her, who looks pleased and has gotten quite close to her head. Lily is so close to her husband that she immediately pushes Theodore away, and as if ready to attack him with fists, she takes a couple of steps back and tells her husband not to come near her. Then Theodore, who didn't understand anything, asked her what was wrong and asked her to stop. Obviously, he didn't understand anything. But this did not bother the protagonist. At this point, she was interested in only one question, which was why Theodore is still dreaming about her. The girl makes you wake up so that you do not see this dream again. After Lily was finally able to wake up, the girl's face was full of fright and frustration. At this point on the girl's face, you could even see the tears she shed because of this dream. While in her bed, the girl is still crying, trying to calm herself down somehow. The girl assures herself that it was just a dream that doesn't mean anything, while she picks up a mug of tea that was in her room. Suddenly at that moment, as the girl reached for her tea, she shuddered because she heard some strange sounds like footsteps behind her back. She immediately turned around and looked at the figure that appeared in her room with incomprehension. It turns out that the silhouette was her husband who came to her. At this moment, Theodore looks very gloomy, and his look is full of distrust and loss. Looking at her husband at that moment, Lily thought about the fact that Theodore was probably drunk, realizing that she was telling Duke Valentino that she thought he was in the wrong room, and it was her room. At that moment, Theodore was approaching the girl while inexorably faltering in his steps. Suddenly, Theodore tried to say the name of his wife, but because he was too drunk, he could not do it, and immediately collapsed into the arms of the protagonist. In the form of deplorable condition of the duke, the protagonist said that she would help him sit down. Seeing her husband's condition, she was quite frightened by his behavior. Because of what was happening, she thought about the possibility of calling one of the maids or Charlotte for help. But before she could do anything, Theodore started laughing loudly and said that he was out of his mind. Lily turned to look at her husband as he continued talking and wondered why he had come here. A question that puzzled Lily a bit. At that moment, she looked at her husband and then gently touched his face. Lily realized that she should stop, but for some reason she wanted to cry. Every time she sees Theodore, it makes her heart hurt and beats very hard. So much so that sometimes she wished it would just stop. Because it turns out that from the moment she first saw Theodore at Everett Castle, she had been experiencing this growing fear. All because she knew her heart would be broken and unhappiness would consume her completely. Lilia realizes that she should not expect anything from Theodore, and she is not able to offer something in return, so she has to suppress these feelings. While still holding Theodore's face, she lifted his head a bit. Despite looking directly into his eyes, the girl as if trying to say something to him. In her opinion, the worst part is that she realizes that someone has become special to her, and she's not sure she can bear the burden especially when it comes to Duke Theodore Valentino. Lily also realizes that Theodore can't reciprocate this feeling, and she also realizes that she shouldn't expect something like this from him. But even so, she can't help but wish that this moment would last forever, kissing Theodore sweetly on the forehead. Then Theodore pressed his head against Lily's chest, but suddenly he shuddered, then immediately fled from the embrace of his wife, of course, the protagonist did not really understand what caused such a sharp reaction of her husband. Then Theodore staggers out of Lily's room while he covers his face with his hand and asks himself what he was thinking when he came here. The guy says once again that he's gone completely crazy while a frightened Lily just watches her husband. At this time, Theodore turns his head away from the main character and said that he was wrong. Also, according to him, this will never happen again. After these words, Theodore tries to leave Lily's room, but stumbles as he leaves. Seeing this, Lily grabs Theodore by the hand, because of this action a little surprised. But religion continues to surprise him and asks that he did not go away and did not leave her here alone. 
At this time, the girl presses against his shoulder, which is very much surprised Theodore. At this time, Lily thinks that, to be completely honest, she is not the native daughter of Duke Everett, of course. Because of this, she has nothing to do with monsters. But coming out of her thoughts and still squeezing her husband's hand, she says that she does not mind if he stays with her. But Theodore remains as adamant as he was before, and says that if something like this happens again, it will end very differently, saying that Theodore is quite serious. Immediately after these words, the Duke abruptly removes his hand and does not allow Lily to continue to squeeze him. He asks her if she really decided to play a joke on him. At this point, the surprised girl blushed a little and asked her husband, what is he even talking about? But Theodore doesn't trust her at all because of her background and says that they must have practiced this trick before they met. He even mocks the protagonist a bit and says that he is sorry that it didn't work. When the girl hears about it, she tries to say that he is wrong, but the Duke asks her to stop pretending and says that he knows that the Everett family told her to seduce him. After these words, he remembered one of the incidents of the past. The guy noticed that probably on the day of their acquaintance in the garden of her family's castle, she tried to attract his attention. The Duke even remembered the girl's face at that moment. Because of these words in the main character flashed shame, she blushed and did not know what to answer the Duke. A little under calmed down, Lily tries to somehow explain his actions that day, but Theodore doesn't even let her finish her thought and says that she has no need to justify herself, while he insists that she planned everything from the beginning. And when she hears about it, the protagonist starts crying and says that it's not true. Seeing such an emotional reaction from the girl, Theodore seemed to believe her words for a moment. He told her so. But he also mentioned that he knew she was just pretending to fool him once again. Theodore once again does not miss the opportunity to accuse Lily of something and asks her to tell him what it is like to seduce a man she does not even like. But the girl says that she never tried to seduce him. Suddenly, the Duke grabs his wife by the shoulder and tells her that her words are completely unconvincing. After these words, the Duke already grabs the girl with his face and tells her that he will do what she wants. After these words, suddenly Duke pulls the girl to himself and begins to kiss her. The girl looks as if she could not have expected this. Even from her look, it is clear that she was expecting a completely different act. But the Duke didn't stop kissing her. Apparently, when he did that, the protagonist started to get aroused. At the same time, they started touching each other's breasts, which also showed their arousal. After that, Theodore stopped kissing her and just started to look at Lily with passion, while the girl herself did not resist and also passionately looked at the Duke in return. Immediately after that, Lily fell on her knees in front of the Duke. Seeing this, the Duke looked at her arrogantly and asked if she wanted to tell him what it was like to kiss a man she didn't like, while he allowed the fact that maybe Lady Everett didn't even mind. Seeing that Lily absolutely nothing answers him, the Duke began to smirk and asked her if they would go further and if Lily would be able to calmly perform conjugal duties every night with him. Hearing about it, Lily suddenly clenched her hand into a fist and suddenly struck a very strong blow on the Duke's face and for her blow on his face even left a small redness, and the duke was shocked that the girl lost her temper and hit him. Well, Lily shiveringly tells Theodore that he knows absolutely nothing about it. While saying this, the protagonist once again started crying because of the false accusations against her. But still smirking, Theodore covers his face with his hand and says that he still thinks that the daughter of the almighty Duke Everett would never want to sleep with him. Immediately after these words, the Duke looked at Lily and dismissively apologized for his insolence and then left her room with a loud slam of the door. And because of the Duke's words, the protagonist began to cry even harder. She even began to stutter as if she did not have enough air. Also, she blushed even more than before because she felt as if she was guilty of something. Because of all this, Lily thinks that it would be much better if she became a monster like her father is. In her opinion, he is a monster who is not able to love someone. At this time, the sun is already rising outside, and the girl is still sitting on the floor and crying, desperation. She does not understand why it had to happen to her, but these thoughts do not calm her down at all, and she is still choking on her tears. Seeing the dawn outside the window, the girl just turned towards the window and watched the sun rise. It also turns out that after this incident, 
Theodore's relationship with the main character became much colder. After a while, when Lily approached Theodore and said that she had something important to tell him, Theodore did not want to listen to her and said that he was busy. Then Lily said that it would not take long. Only after these words, the Duke turned to his wife and asked her what is the matter. He also emphasized that she should tell everything briefly and do not delay. Then she says that her father and brothers are quite different from her. Also, according to her, this marriage is not desirable. At this time, from excitement, she clutches them in the hands of dresses in which she is dressed. But even this excessive excitement does not silence the girl. She emphasizes that she did not marry Duke Theodore to bring harm to his family. She told him that her father forced her to do so, and she in turn would prefer to be useful to him and his family. Hearing all this, the Duke looks at her with apprehension and distrust, and in his eyes you can see the indifference he feels for her. After these words, the Duke looked the other way and said that he was interested in what she had to say. According to him, that was the only reason he listened to her. He also mentioned that if she was trying to deceive him, let the girl do it at least more convincingly, though in his opinion she seemed to be quite sincere. Also from the words of the main character at the same time, Theodore often went to the front lines in order to eliminate the cracks that appeared in his duchy. From her words, it took three days, and sometimes it happened that it took a month or two. It was because of this factor that she rarely saw the Duke, and of course rarely spoke to him. The feeling of defeat gradually took over her heart, which made her life even more dull and sad as well. It was in this way that she was excluded from all family events and cut off even from the insignificant events that took place there, as well as Mrs. Seymour gladly turned a blind eye to the sophisticated abuse of the servants over her. But it did not care at all, because the only person who could offend her really always was Theodore. Once the protagonist even tried to talk to Theodore about the ball in the capital, then she asked him if it was obligatory to accompany her. The girl wanted the Duke to attend the event himself. She wanted to stay on the estate to restore the abandoned greenhouse in their family garden and to distribute medicinal herbs to the people of the duchy who need them. But the Duke's answer was very harsh, so Theodore told her not to get involved in things that don't concern her because she is not the Duchess of the duchy, but only Lily Everett. Another time, the girl asked Theodore to help her out a little. She just wanted him to stay with her until the party they were at was over. But Theodore didn't even let her touch him then, and just asked her what she was trying to do this time. But the girl just told him that she thought his brother was asking about him, and he should go to him. Because of all these incidents, the girl's strength simply ran out. She realized that whatever happened in any case, Duke Theodore will never take her side, and will take the side of her opponent. Then, during their conversation, the Duke simply began to press Lily not to forget who she was, According to her, he was the one who created her, and she would belong to him until his death. Because of all this, the protagonist started saying her name in her head. She thought about how her name sounded like it was expendable and could be used for her own purposes without thinking about the consequences. But beyond that, she finds it quite surprising that many men wanted to acquire her, all of them apparently waiting for their divorce from Duke Valentino in order to possess Lily. Back then, Owen even weighed the wealth of those who wanted to take her as a second wife, or a mere concubine. The girl had no idea there were so many who wanted her shell. After thinking about her shell, she thought that maybe only the shell is not needed by all these people, because usually dolls are beautiful and easy to handle, but inside are empty and soulless. Despite all of the above, Lily was well aware that Theodore had been forced to marry her in order to protect all of his family's holdings. She realized that it was a marriage that neither of them wanted, but led to whom, unfortunately, in fact, the main character's troubles did not end there. She had feelings for a man who despised her and her whole family. She even put on him uselessly and hopes, because that was her real unhappiness. That's why in the middle of all the action she gave up. But one day a year and a half later, Something began to happen that surprised even the girl herself and left a mark on her. So once standing at one window, she once again addressed the Duke, but it was just a rehearsal before the main conversation she was planning to begin. Then, right after this rehearsal, the protagonist went to her husband's room. There, she knocked on the door, and one of the maids was surprised that the protagonist was already here and came to support her husband. 
Confused by everything that was going on, she walked into the room and smelled the pungent odor of medicine. It turns out Theodore had suffered a serious head injury, and during the treatment the smell of the medicine was all over the room. Then the maid said that Theodore had lost a lot of blood while they were bringing him here, but she said that he was stable now, and luckily his lordship was recovering quickly from that injury, at which point the worried protagonist clutched her dress in her hands and said that it was fine. In doing so, we learn that she was truly worried about her husband's condition when she was informed that he had been badly injured during a crack in his duchy, with the protagonist thinking that it seems that all her fears were in vain. After all, she realized that the guy has always been pretty tough, but now it would be better if he rested, so she realizes that she has to go. Right after these thoughts, Lily actually turns away from the maid and tells her that she will go. The surprised maid at this point looks straight into the back of the protagonist and asks if she is really leaving already. But without waiting for an answer, the maid comes to the girl and asks her to wait at least until her husband wakes up. But Lily, who is leaving in a hurry, says it would be better if Theodore did not see her in his room when he wakes up. Hearing this, the surprised maid apologizes to the Duchess for such a question and asks what she means. But the girl does not answer anything and just tries to leave. But she does not succeed. Because Theodore woke up at that moment, I moved the screen away from my bed and saw her in my room. Naturally, the Duke could not expect to see Lily in his room because he thought that she did not care about him at all. Lily herself was also very surprised when she saw the Duke awake. When Theodore sees his wife, he does not say anything to her. Because of this, the main character, who is also a little confused by what is happening, looks at her husband and wonders why he is silent. Theodore, in his turn, just turns his head away from the main character and tries to understand what she is doing here. But the girl at this moment thinks that maybe it would be better for her to leave before he says anything. Then she bows a little to the Duke and apologizes for disturbing his peace. But Theodore, who looked still quite surprised, just asked the girl who she was. Hearing this question, the protagonist was very surprised. She even apologized to the Duke for not understanding his question. But no less surprised, Theodore continued to look directly at her, not understanding who is in front of him. At this point, the protagonist is trying to somehow understand what he meant when he said it. Once again, not hearing any response from her husband, fear and misunderstanding overcame the protagonist. She thinks that maybe she has gone completely crazy, and maybe she is imagining things, while Theodore continued to look at her and expect a response. Seeing this, Lily decides to tell the Duke that she is his wife, although she thinks that it is probably a temporary phenomenon. By temporary phenomenon, she meant their marriage. When she heard the Duke's question, the maid was also a little surprised and looked at Theodore and asked him if he really did not remember that this girl was his wife. Theodore, equally surprised by what was happening, wondered if it was really his wife, and it was impossible to hide the surprise on his face that he had found out he was a married man. Then the maid decided to bring a little clarity to everything that was going on. She asked the Duke if he had really forgotten that he had been married for over a year to Lily. She mentioned that he recognized her and asked why he didn't recognize his wife. At this moment, Lily's face expressed concern about everything that was going on, and Theodore grabbed his head and said that he couldn't remember anything. Even on his face, it could be seen that it worried the Duke very much. At last, the maid, who is also the Duke's healer, guessed what the matter was. She was very much upset about her thoughts, though she dared to voice them and said that apparently the Duke suffers from amnesia. Lily was a little surprised and asked how that was possible. But then the healer said that luckily Theodore remembered everything important that had happened in his life. But when it came to her, he couldn't remember anything. In her opinion, it was partial amnesia. Also, according to the healer, they need to wait a little and see if the Duke will remember her, while the girl does not forget to bow before her mistress. At this moment, Lily thinks that apparently the healer thinks that the usual conversation will help to restore his memory, but she still does not leave the evil thoughts, and the girl suggests that perhaps the Duke wanted to forget her because of his incredibly strong contempt for her person. But the Duke once again proves that he does not remember anything, and smiling and looking at the girl asks her if she could come a little closer to him. And the Duke, 
who still hated the girl, even extends his hand to her. Naturally knowing all of her husband's reactions earlier when she approached him, Lily was wary of his request. But the Duke insisted and even asked her a second time. Only then Lily decided to approach Theodore and took his hand. But even this did not help him to remember anything. And then Theodore asked the girl if he could know her name. Then the girl decided to tell him that her name was Lily. When he heard this, the smiling Duke said that the girl had a beautiful name. But she decided not to hide anything from the Duke Tador and told him that before their wedding and her name was Lily Everett, while she certainly realized that the Duke remembers what evil her family had done to him. Hearing the name of his wife, the Duke was very surprised and even a little as if confused. When he realized who his wife was, the Duke began to analyze her. He noticed her silver hair and peridot eyes, but even after paying attention to these factors, he did not say anything. Then Lily asked him if he really did not remember anything about her, and the Duke said it was true. When Lily heard his answer, she said that if it was true, the Duke should ask another person about her. She said it would give him an idea of how he should treat her, and then she tried to leave. But the Duke grabbed her arm and asked her to stay a little longer. But the girl insisted and said that she wanted to leave and she asked the Duke to let her go, but her words had no effect on the Duke's opinion. He still insisted that Lily should not leave. At this point, he even pulled her a little to himself and began to look at the girl directly in the eyes. Lily, in response, also a little confused at this point, and just continued to look at her husband. At this moment, a little worried because of his surroundings, the Duke decided to ask Lily if he had offended her in the past, but without waiting for an answer to his question, he immediately asked her if she could tell him how they got married, and seeing the frightened face of his wife at this moment, he also asked her if it would be difficult for her to do so. Upon hearing this question, the girl says that it is really hard for her to talk about it, and asks the guy to ask someone else about it, and argues that even she has a sense of shame, and that is why she will not explain anything to him. After these words, the girl looked at Theodore with concern. Hearing this, the Duke himself was also a little surprised. But the girl once again asked him to let her go so she could leave. After she asked the Duke for the second time, he gave in to her entreaties and let the girl go. Right after that happened, she started to leave his room in a hurry, while Theodore just stared at her back. After the Duchess left Theodore's room, he was left feeling upset and began to think about Lily. He still looked very worried and sad. After a while, the action moves to Duke Theodore's study, where he was chatting with one of the maids while reading a book. The maid apologized for not the most happy news, but still informed him that the Duchess did not want to see him. Hearing this, Theodore got a little angry and closed the book he was reading with a slam. While the maid who told him the news also looked quite sad, the Duke in turn began to remember how he had communicated with his servants about Lily. Turns out, when you asked his servant about it, he told him he married the Duchess for the good of his family. He said it was some kind of deal with the Everett family. The Duke thinks about the fact that a year and a half is both a short and a very long time. He vaguely remembers visiting the Everett family estate about two years ago. He is also sure that he ran into someone then, but still can't remember who. After this recollection, the Duke gets up from his seat and looks at the maid. He asks her if he remembers correctly that her name is Charlotte. When she hears her name, the girl blushes a little but still says that the Duke is right. Immediately after that, Theodore asked the maid to escort him to the Duchess's room. Of course, Charlotte was very much surprised by this and even a little frightened, but she still could not refuse the Duke and agreed to do so. Just after the Duke and Charlotte reached the Duchess's room, another maid reported that Lily had just left, noting that the girl said she hadn't been gone long. When the Duke heard about it, he was very much surprised, and said that the Duchess would not go out alone. According to him, she must be accompanied by someone, and he decided to ask the maid about it. At that moment, the girl did not answer anything and just let her head go down. Seeing the maid's reaction, Theodore asked her if he understood her to mean that the girl had left unaccompanied, even though she was the Duchess of Valentino. But the maid didn't answer him anything and just thought that it was nothing new. But after all this, she still dared to tell the Duke that, to be perfectly frank, this happened regularly. For Lily often went out alone, and no one but Charlotte wanted to accompany her. At this point, 
She lowered her head to the duke and said she was sorry for what happened. But the duke seemed a little angry and said they would talk about it later. Apparently, now he wants to find Lily. At this moment, Charlotte was still behind his back, and she blushed a little when she heard him talking to the other maid. At this moment, the duke turned around a little and thought that apparently Charlotte seemed to know something about Lily's whereabouts. Theodore asked the maid where the duchess was now, and then the worried Charlotte said that she did not know. But the duke did not lose hope to learn at least something from Charlotte, and noted that she was constantly seeing her, so that she knew where the duchess was. After hearing the duke's words, Charlotte decided to tell him where Lily could be. She noticed that the girl often walked by the river outside the city, but now she really doesn't know where Lily is today. While looking at Charlotte, the Duke looked a little puzzled. But it turns out that all this is because he thinks that apparently the Duchess has secrets of her own, and he intends to find out whatever it is. Immediately after these thoughts, the Duke opens the door to the Duchess's room, while Charlotte is behind his back in surprise. She was very much agitated that Theodore had entered the room without the Duchess's permission, but moreover, the Duke even allowed himself to touch her things without the Duchess's permission. These actions agitated Charlotte even more. Then the Duke noticed a box where the Duchess kept all her jewelry and jewels. After he opened it, Theodore took out a beautiful necklace with emeralds. Looking at this necklace, he remembered that it was worn by some girl, but he still can't remember her face. Immediately after that, he noticed that there was a painting on the table. After he took it in his hands, the guy marveled at the beauty of the picture. He looked in amazement at the landscape that was painted there. Charlotte informed Duke Theodore that this picture was painted by the Duchess. Hearing this, the Duke once again looked at the painted landscape and said that everything becomes much more interesting because he could not guess about such hobbies of his wife. Dear friends, and if you want to see the next part of this interesting story, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and do not forget to click on the bell to not miss new videos. When the video has 40,000 views or 5,000 likes, I will definitely create for you the next part as the chapters appear, and we will return to our story. Charlotte thought about the fact that Theodore Valentino always did whatever he wanted, and usually he was very kind to his people. But even in these actions, there were always exceptions. This exception was the Duchess. The girl knows that this was always the case, and that the Duke always behaved with her not as kindly as with the others. She realized that he acted as if he always had to tolerate her presence in his house. After looking around a little more in his wife's room, the Duke found the very pills she had taken earlier. Because Charlotte was behind his back, she couldn't see what was in the Duke's hands. But after he squeezed the jar of pills in his hands and held it up for her to see, Charlotte was very frightened. After touching the jar a little and seeing the pills in it, the Duke turned to Charlotte and angrily asked her, What kind of pills are in this jar? Then Charlotte was very upset that he found them, because she did not want to tell him anything. But she realized that she could not keep silent because it was the Duke himself. But because of the fact that the girl very much changed the degeneration of the face when he asked her this question, the Duke realized that there is something wrong. Then Charlotte and told him what these pills and we did not show it. But after her answer, the Duke just kept silent. Suddenly, we are transported to another time. Then some girl was giving potatoes to poor people. Everyone around was very happy that she was doing such good deeds for them and helping them to survive somehow. All the people around praise this girl because according to them, she is a very kind person. They say that she always comes here to help them with food. And last winter, she distributed blankets to everyone. According to these residents, if it were not for her, their families may have frozen to death. It is at this point we are shown the face of this girl. It turns out she is a red-haired beauty with green eyes. Also, according to the residents recently, their lives have started to get better. Those damn cracks don't appear every day as they used to. Another resident says it's true, because then he was worried that he could be attacked by monsters at any time. But they realize that all the changes are for the better thanks to their Lord. According to them, his power grows every day. So the cracks and monsters don't stand a chance. It turns out to be more accurate originally. Seraphim made a pact with the older brother of the Valentino family, but eventually recognized Theodore as his new master and his power began to stabilize. And now that the Duke is able to deal with all the cracks that appear, 
His family no longer needs help from the protagonist's family, so their family tries to regain their former power. It turned out that the red-haired beauty was the main character. She just reincarnated into another girl so that she was no longer judged, and in a different body she helped the others to survive. At the same time, the girl perfectly realized that perhaps soon she will really divorce Theodore. Regardless of whether he remembers or not, their positions still remain unchanged. During her thoughts, the girl is already leaving this place. Seeing this, a grateful resident of the place runs up to the protagonist. She asks Lily if she's really leaving, and then the protagonist says that she is, because she still has unfinished business, noting that next time she'll bring fruit. Then the resident says it's not worth it, but she still notes that they are grateful to the girl for her help. But the protagonist says it's not worth it, and she will still fulfill her promises. Suddenly she hears some voice. This voice is male and very sinister. The guy who belongs to this voice says to the other person, Don't you dare stand in his way and get lost. The girl realizes that this voice is very familiar to her, and then she turns around to see who is there. At that moment, she sees some guy of aristocratic appearance who humiliates ordinary people. According to this guy, all these people are a bunch of insects from Veronis's domain. He asks them if they even know who he is, at which point the protagonist realizes that it's one of her brothers, whose name is Heeson. Seeing all the commotion going on around her, the girl wonders how this could have happened, because she knows that Heeson often brought his men to spy on the Duchy of Veronis, but never showed violence to the people who live here. At this point, all the people gathered around him, and the person he is saying all this to, Suddenly, Heisen turns around and asks the other person what he is looking at and if he would like to die right now. The protagonist asks a gawker what's going on here, but he doesn't even have time to say anything as suddenly Heisen starts yelling at another resident again. He asked how dare he insult the Everett family while he's here. Hearing these words of her brother Lily finally became clear. She realizes that apparently the attitude of the inhabitants of the Duchy of Veronis to the Everett family has changed a bit. Before they were only pure hatred. But recently, there are many who simply mock and ridicule their family. At the same time, she realizes that her brother Heisen has a rather fiery temper, and that is why he would not tolerate such a thing. Hearing the ridicule of his family, he angrily approached those people and asked them if they had finished talking. Right after that, the guy drew his sword and calling these people idiots gave them a choice. He said they would either have their throats cut or their tongues cut off for insulting his family like that. Then he stood there with his sword in his hand and asked them if they were ready to make a choice. The people around them were very much angered by Heisen's words. They asked him who he was to make a decision for them. According to the common people, only their lord has the right to punish them. But they insist that they have not said anything wrong for which they deserve punishment. Then one careless resident said that even the dogs on the street knew that the Everett family home was the devil's lair. But only one of the men who watched it all realized that this hair was a characteristic of some family. Then this man loudly declared that this young man is the son of Duke Everett. Then the narcissistic Heisen stuck his sword back up and asked these people if this was true, only now had it come to their attention. While saying that it was something rather expected, after all, they are a bunch of dumbfounded cockroaches. He kept smiling madly and reminded people that they have to make their choice. He reminds them that there are only two choices, throat or tongue. Also, he chose the extreme person on the left. From those who spoke badly about his family, people were very scared of him and started trembling in front of him. Because of the intense fright, these people could not say anything or even make any choice. Then the guy got angry and asked this guy if he was mute while he remarks in a sarcastic way that they were talking normally and why he is silent now. Did he swallow his tongue? At this time, the protagonist is very upset about everything she sees. The girl realizes that she cannot stand there and humbly look at it. She decides to approach her brother, and then the surprised guy looking directly at his sister only in a different form, asks her, Who else is she? Then the girl says that her name is Leah, and she is a servant who works in Duke Valentino's castle. Immediately after these words, she begins to apologize for interfering while he is punishing these people. But she also begins to sincerely ask for forgiveness on behalf of all the people. 
She asks for Hizen to just listen to her. According to her, they have not been properly educated from the beginning, and in addition have experienced attacks from magical beings for the past year and a half. So now these people, according to her, are not themselves. She also emphasizes that it was because of all these circumstances that they said rash things because of resentment. She asked to find the strength to show them mercy and ask them for their insolence. At first glance, her words seemed to make the guy think, but after a moment on her brother's face, his smile reappeared, which showed all his madness. He immediately drew his sword again and put it right to the town of the protagonist. According to him, she is very brave for a simple servant girl, and her manners are excellent considering that she works in the castle. Then the protagonist, as if not even afraid, just thanked him for praising her. After that, Hyson leaned slightly in front of the girl and took his sword away from her throat. At this moment he still continued to laugh, but suddenly grabbed the girl and pulled her to him, looking with his crazy look right in her eyes. He asked her what she was doing, and if she had found a new hobby in this way. The main character froze for a second because she was so frightened. She hoped that the magic pendant that changes her personality must be working perfectly, or else she would be in trouble. At that moment, her brother grabbed her hand and started to lead her somewhere. After a short time, he took her around a corner and pushed her hard into the wall. Then looking directly at his sister, the guy said she had a very ugly shell and asked her to put it all back immediately. Obviously, he guessed that this girl was his sister. After these words from her brother, she took a deep breath and took out the very pendant that changes her appearance. Then magically, she turned back into herself while her disgruntled brother just sat there watching his sister turn back into herself. Because of the fact that she was found out the main character is very sad, but then her brother began to ask her a lot of questions, and one of them was why she walks around the city in the form of an ordinary maid from the palace, if she is a duchess. But the girl does not want to tell him anything and says that it was for a reason, but suddenly he grabbed Lily's hand, which made her very surprised especially when she saw that he was out of his mind and started to tie her hands. So she asked him why he was reacting like that, but her brother just asked if she was really going to marry Lennon Chester. The obviously unhappy girl who has her hands tied tells her brother a little bit angrily that it's none of his business, but then the even angrier guy says it's always been about him, proving once again that he will always be in control of her life. After this conversation, he harnesses his horse apparently to ride away and get his sister out of here. But suddenly someone calls them from behind and orders them to stand still, at which point both heroes turn around to see who it is. At that moment, a horse was approaching them from afar, and Lily was surprised to see it. It was Duke Theodore himself who was riding the horse. Obviously, he had guessed where Lily was and what she was doing here and had come to fetch her. The duke immediately looked at his wife's bound hands. His gaze was very harsh and expressed great displeasure at what he was seeing. Lily's brother grabbed his head and began to think about what was happening. At that moment, Theodore jumped off his horse and angrily looked at Lily's brother and quickly approached him and asked him what he was doing. At that moment, a frightened Lily was behind him and watching everything that was happening. At this point, an exasperated Theodore turned to Hyson and began to force him to answer his questions honestly. But seeing all of Duke Theodore's efforts, Hyson asked him, Since when did he care about this tramp? Hearing these words, Theodore was very surprised and became nervous. He asked what Hyson had now called his wife. When he sees this, Hyson starts to mock him. Looking at the Duke, he twirls his finger at his temple and asks if he's crazy or if he's hit his head. He notices that Theodore is talking about Lily, who is the woman he despises the most, and yet Theodore still treats her like a treasure. These words had some effect on Theodore, who seemed to think about it, and Hyson asked him if his actions were just an act. Seeing that Theodore was thinking, Lily thought that it would not be easy for him to answer, and it would be very bad if he told everyone about the loss of his memory. In her opinion, her father along with Owen can use such a trifle against Theodore. Meanwhile, Lily herself is also not idle, and tries to unleash her hands to interfere in their conversation and help Theodore. After she succeeded, the girl stood up for Theodore and told her brother that even the fact that he is her younger brother does not give him the right to play a joke on her. So she asked him to stop, because in her opinion it's not funny, 
At this moment, Hyson, who saw it, looked at his sister with surprise. Lily was not quite understandable such a reaction of her brother, because she did not understand why he was surprised. The girl did not believe that he thinks that she cannot unleash something like this. Lily then turns to the Duke and says that Hyson was just kidding, and she says he can't worry because nothing serious will happen here. But her words don't convince Theodore that everything is fine, and the excited Duke put his hands on Lily's shoulders and asked her how she could talk like that, because he was controlling her and trying to drag her away as if she were a bully. According to him, it could not be taken as a prank. But realizing that Lily still insists that her brother was just joking, Theodore asks who the hell would joke like that with a living person, at which point Lily looks at her husband in surprise as she has never seen him so concerned about her before. At this point, Lily thinks that this behavior is really strange, because this is not the person she knows. Suddenly she wondered if he would be so upset. If he was the one she knew before she lost her memory, the girl wondered, would he just not pay attention to this? She thinks that maybe he wouldn't even look for her. And then the girl is transported back to reality, where she looks at Theodore's hand still on her shoulder. Seeing her brother's annoyed face, she realizes that she has no other choice, and she has to try her only plan for this case. Then the protagonist closes her eyes and begins to hold her breath. At that moment, she sees a worried Theodore and her brother trying to approach her to grab her. They can already see the girl as if in a fog, because at that moment she is on the verge of losing consciousness. At this point, she begins to feel that she begins to suffocate. The girl feels as if she is drowning very slowly and just cannot take a breath of air. Suddenly, she wakes up in her bed seeing this is approached by a frightened Charlotte who asks Lily if she is okay. The maid asks her mistress to breathe evenly and not to rush too much. But Lily immediately grabs her throat. Finally, she feels that she can take a breath of air but at the same time, the girl thinks about the fact that her plan worked perfectly. And finally, she managed to get rid of the hyson. At this moment, Theodore enters her room. He speaks as if he is happy to see her and even calls Lily Madame. At this moment, the protagonist looks at her husband and Charlotte is very surprised to see him here. Theodore himself came to the girl's bed and began to watch her reaction with surprise. At this moment, the girl's face expressed complete shock. Then the guy decided to sit down to her, from which Lily even a little shuddered. But Theodore didn't have any bad intentions. He just asked Lily how she was feeling. He even touched the girl a little. Then Lily said she was fine, after saying that Theodore looked at her painfully. After that, he said that he was very frightened when Lily suddenly stopped breathing. According to the Duke, the doctor said that he should continue to monitor her condition, so the girl should try not to miss meetings with him. Hearing this, and seeing the Duke really worried, the girl agreed not to miss the appointment with the doctor, but she immediately asked if her brother had left, and then the Duke said that perhaps he had returned to his residence in Salisbury, because in Veronis, he was no longer there. Hearing this, Lily was very surprised and wondered how this was possible. She also wondered if it was true that her brother had a residence that only belonged to him. In her opinion, this is a rather strange factor. All because she knew that her younger brother had always been proud to be a member of the Everett family. He had always shown his loyalty to his family by his actions, so he didn't open his personal file and was followed by only a few nights. She becomes very curious as to why he suddenly started caring about the property. Lily suspects that maybe her family members are hiding something to a friend. At this point, the protagonist looked quite pensive. She tries to guess what was the trigger for all this, but at this moment... Duke Theodore notices that the girl looks very thoughtful. He immediately turns to her to understand what is the matter. At the moment when he turned to her, the girl was even a little scared because she was deep in her thoughts. She doesn't tell the Duke anything about her guesses and just tells him that it doesn't matter what's wrong with her brother because according to her, that's exactly what Hyson has always been. He's cruel and funny at the same time. The Duke is even a little surprised to hear such words from Lily. Hearing these words, Duke realized that he could not comment on anything and agreed with everything that was said. Then he told the girl that she needs a little rest after all that was, but he says that if she wants him to stay with her, he is ready to do it. But Lily looks very lost and tells her husband that she does not want it. Of course, Theodore is very surprised by such a sharp reaction and such an unexpected rejection of his wife. Because of this, 
he just in shock continues to look at her without saying a word. Realizing that she was a little wrong in her statements and was too harsh, Lily begins to explain to the Duke what she meant. According to her, she just wants to be alone because she is uncomfortable when there are people around her. Then, the joyful Duke, who thought that the problem was not in his person, apologized to the girl and said that he had not even thought about it. After these words, Lily seemed to sink, which became obvious to Charlotte as well. Seeing this, Duke Theodore said that in that case he would go, and before he left he told his wife to rest. Then Lily decided to reciprocate and told the Duke to rest too. Immediately after that, Theodore left the room. But already leaving the Duke asked the protagonist of some favor. Without forcing her to do anything, she asked if she could address him by his name. The next time they see each other, once again the changed Duke very much struck Lily and Charlotte. While Charlotte was left alone together with her mistress, she told Lily that she was very scared when she found out that mistress had suddenly passed out. The girl does look quite disappointed. According to her own words for a second, she thought that her heart had almost stopped. And immediately after that, Charlotte asked her mistress if she was all right at the moment. Lily smiled a little and said that she was really hoping for it. But Charlotte was surprised to hear it and didn't fully understand the meaning of what she said. But smiling Lily said that she intended to pass out. According to her, there is a certain way that helped her to do it. Also, she emphasizes that if Charlotte is interested to know about it, she can elaborate on it more. Suddenly hearing this, Charlotte turned to her mistress, which embarrassed Lily a little. Then Charlotte, who was blushing a little because of what she was experiencing, asked her mistress not to do that again. Never again. Then Lily said that if it bothered her maid so much, she wouldn't do it again. When Charlotte heard this, she was very pleased and said that she wanted Lily to promise her that. Then Lily naturally agreed. Then an incredibly embarrassed Charlotte turned away, and Lily just continued to stare the embarrassed maid in the back. Immediately after that, satisfied with her mistress's answer, Charlotte put a bowl of warm soup on the tray she had prepared to feed her mistress. She said the soup was warm, but it must be a little cold now. But even a little cold soup did not embarrass Lily and she said she would eat it anyway. At that moment, Lily remembers Theodore's words as he left her room. The words about addressing him by his name still lingered in her mind. She couldn't think of anything else. She thinks about the fact that earlier there were times when she used to call him impatiently, and sometimes this impatience turned into despair. Sometimes she called him with expectation, but only then she realized that it was pointless in any case. At that moment, it upset her very much so much so that it even made her cry. We also learn why she does not want to open up to the Duke, all because she thinks that he will soon understand everything, namely how to treat her, the wife who is nothing more than a simple toy in the hands of the Duke. She thinks that all his good behavior is an illusion that was caused by memory loss, just like the sunlight that now shines and then disappears, at which point the action shifts to Duke Valentino's office. There, the Duke, worried about everything that is happening, sighs heavily, and remembers the very moment when his wife lost consciousness, then she fell right into his arms, not moving, as if she was directly dead. At this point, her younger brother, Hyson, grabbed his head and said in a frenzy that this crazy bitch again took up her own. But the Duke did not even pay attention to his words because he was only concerned about the state of the girl. But Hyson did not stop talking and informed the Duke that she intended to faint. Also, the younger brother of the girl asked him to be more careful towards her. But the Duke was very surprised, and as if he did not even believe that she could faint intentionally. Seeing that Theodore didn't really believe him, Hyson seemed to get even more furious. He said that for the Duke's information, this girl specializes in attracting people's attention in this way. Then the Duke was very much surprised at what he had heard. But Hyson did not stop talking about it, and asked, Does he not care about it anymore? After all, they will soon divorce anyway. When Theodore heard about it, he was even more surprised, because he could not have expected such things. Then, seeing the surprised Duke Hyson, asked Theodore why he was so surprised to hear this. With the younger brother of the protagonist emphasizing that he thought Theodore was not going to spend the rest of his life married to a woman from their family. Seeing Duke Theodore's still surprised face, Hyson asked the Duke if he was planning to divorce his sister at the right time. Also, 
According to him, as soon as that happens, she will have to marry Lennon Chester, with Heisen calling the guy the bastard of the Chester family. Her brother told her on the way out that the girl's life was really miserable, as if their engagement wasn't enough, and that her next husband would be bloody Chester. Hisson is a pretty shrewd guy and says that apparently Theodore didn't even spend his first night with his wife. He asked Theodore if he realized what consequences await her after she marries the scumbag and the Chester family. Back from his thoughts, Duke Theodore looks at the very pills he found in his wife's room. Looking directly at these pills, he wonders what he has been doing all this time since all matters are out of his control. He can't get it out of his head that her brother told him that once he divorced Lily, she would have to marry Lennon Chester. Theodore is even sad at the thought of it. Immediately after the Duke returned to the harsh reality from his thoughts, he immediately rang the bell to summon his servant. Immediately some guy enters his room and asks the Duke if he wanted something. Then, as if a little embittered, the Duke asked his servant to summon Calvin and asked him to wait in the library for Theodore's arrival. After a short time, Calvin came into the Duke's office and asked the Duke if his memories had returned to him. Apparently this guy is the Duke's healer who is studying his health. Then the Duke left his papers for a while and told the boy that he had not yet regained his memory. Hearing this, Calvin was naturally a little surprised and wondered why the Duke had called him to him. After this question, the Duke suddenly answers and says he needs to know about how he was before he lost his memory. He's curious about his behavior with Lily and what he and she talked about earlier. He sweetly asks Calvin to tell him that if he's in the know, then Calvin was even more surprised. He asked the Duke why he wanted to know, for he had heard that the Duke had already inquired about the steward's service on the subject. But Theodore simply says that he wanted his opinion in the last place. And that is why he asked him. Then Calvin creakily pulled one of the chairs in the study toward him and told the Duke that the way he was treating her was actually quite reasonable, especially for a man of the Valentino family. However, he mentions that if you look at the life his wife lived, it was ridiculous yet he doesn't think the Duke was that harsh. After all, he thinks it's fair considering she's from the Everett family. Then the Duke reasonably replied to this guy and emphasized that now this girl is not part of the Everett family. Now she is part of the Duchy and the Valentino family. At this point, Calvin seemed completely uninterested in this conversation and just swayed in his chair. He still mentioned that the Duke was suffering for nothing because of this woman. Hearing this, Theodore was very surprised and asked the guy why he thought so. Then the boy told him that the story Theodore told him was quite mysterious. In his opinion, it is very difficult to distinguish who is to blame and who is right. That is why he thinks it would be better to wait until the Duke returns his memories. Calvin also asked his Duke not to try to get close to Lily, because according to him, the Duke might regret it. Hearing this... Theodore was even more surprised and said that nevertheless, he would like to hear everything that the guy does not know about it. According to Theodore, he is curious about all of this. Because later, he will have to make a serious decision, hearing the words of his duke. The guy took his gum and sighed heavily and decided to tell him how it all began and happened in the future. According to him, Theodore and Lily first met two years ago in Duke Everett's castle. And then something strange began to happen, which is quite difficult for Calvin to explain because he doesn't know everything and doesn't understand everything completely. According to him, he knows quite a bit. But as he knows, he's always busy with his business. But at the same time, a couple of months ago, she wanted to do something and then there was a huge problem. Then because of all this, some of the servants began to collect dead birds and rats and then they left them near the Duchess's window or right in front of her room. At that moment, he called one of the maids and asked her about it. It turned out that at that time, the servants had been doing it for more than half a year. In Calvin's opinion, it all looked rather strange. Then he thought about whether to tell the Duke or not. But in the end, the guy decided to deal with it himself. Then he hoped that it would not happen again. After hearing this heartwarming story, the Duke began to think about why he was to blame for everything. He realized that because of him she was subjected to constant and hidden abuse. He realized that she was the person who quietly put up with it all the time. He realizes that the servants were whispering behind her back trying to hide their irritation with her. Then Theodore thought 
that two years is a very long time, and if one harms another during that time, it is likely that the one who was harmed will not be able to fully heal his wounds. At the same time, he admits the idea that things may be much simpler than he thinks at first glance. In his opinion, it seems that the darkness in her heart is much deeper than he might have thought. Suddenly at this moment he was seized by a strange conviction. Suddenly on his mind came the words of his old teacher. According to him the essence of suffering in the man himself, because already having happiness in one piece of bread, man still continues to want more. According to his old teacher, greed, hatred, and envy are the sources of misery, deepening the pain in people's hearts. He realizes that mankind has never learned to isolate itself from these negative emotions that only bring destruction and all bad things after them. Also, at this moment, the Duke has a genuine desire to ask himself before he loses the memory of why he was so cruel to Lily. A question that apparently bothers him very much from the very first day they met and he was drawn to her. At this moment he remembers the words that Calvin said to him. According to the guy on the day when the Duke went to the castle of Lily's family and met with her, he told Calvin about the feeling he had at that moment. Calvin understood everything at once and guessed that Theodore fell in love at first sight. Calvin also mentioned that Theodore didn't stop talking about her. Then according to Calvin, Theodore remembered every detail that usually people don't even pay attention to. Like how she cut her nails, which already seemed too short. One example of such small and not quite significant details was that Theodore noticed the mole that was on Lily between her index finger and thumb. Then Calvin even asked his master if he was a pervert, because usually no one notices or remembers such things. He thought he was going crazy. Dear friends, and if you want to see the next part of this story, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and do not forget to click on the bell to not miss it. And in order to speed up the release of the next part, let's get under this video, 40,000 views or 5,000 likes, and then I will immediately begin to make for you the next part. Because the chapters have already come out enough, uh,